24 driving business So the tech lovers, the world's first humanoid robot is here, beautifully created but essentially flawed. Ada is an accomplished artist who has shown her designs at the Venice Biennale and addressed the House of Lords about the future of the creative industries. Her designs are realistic but non-functional, raising the question, would AI behave in the way we expect it to? Ada has created a robot, one that can talk, answer complex questions, paint and create art currently on display at the London Design Biennale. Ada's robot is beautiful but flawed. Spoons have holes in them and cups are missing sides making them completely non-functional. And that's the conversation Ada's creators wanted to start. With the staggering pace of AI development, can we really trust the technology to behave in the way we expect it to? The biggest thing is we just do not know where AI is going to land. We can see the short-term gains but actually that's not going to be where it stays. AI is moving so quickly and the fact that we are just just going in there so confidently without actually doing tests, without doing trials before releasing it to the public ethically is the biggest problem. Aiden Miller confirms. All right, good morning and of course it is a good time for us to get going with our business insight here on smart means business it is a friday it is public holiday and of course i, I pretty much guess lots of people are home seated uh, either way rethinking about how the week has been as you prepare for monday uh, next week of course uh, besides that you get to realize that the opportunities are quite many uh, for those who are actively working today as well because you have to tap into uh, the, the market which is available on such a day which does seem to be quite um, unbusy if you come to think of it. But of course our kind of discussion today is we are analyzing the allocation of the agricultural sector once again. On Wednesday we, we looked at agro-industrialization as uh, a program under the next financial year budget. Today we are pretty much understanding uh, the agricultural sector, at least, because there has been um, budget cuts in regards to the next financial year, because when you come to think of it, uh, the, uh, the government increased the agro-industrialization budget by 23% from 1.44 billion uh, shillings to 1.7 billion shillings in the coming financial year. Uh, but there have been cuts that have been observed in funding extension workers especially in the local government here. And of course, these are likely to water down all efforts made by government. Because if you come to think of it, uh, the extension workers play a critical role in assisting farmers in implementing the programs of government and its development farm uh, partners. So more discussions here, uh, uh, what we're going to be having. And joining me this morning, uh, we're having a gentleman from the Uganda National uh, Farmers Federation, that is none other than Nelson Tukundani, who is uh, the communications manager at the Federation. Good morning, sir, and many thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you, Jerome. Mm -hmm. Happy to be here today at mm -hmm. Smart uh, TV mm -hmm. uh, Heroes Day. Indeed. I must congratulate my farmers mm -hmm. uh, who are the heroes of Uganda who have been there to supply food mm 
mm. day in, day out, and give us money as well yeah. as uh, strengthen our economy. Happy really to, mm. uh, happy Heroes Day to everyone, especially the farmers. Mm. I'm glad I'm here. Okay, pleasure is ours to hosting you this morning. Uh, when you come to think of uh, farmers first, you are the communications manager, the Uganda National Farmers Federation. What does the federation do and what are the major objectives? I want my viewers to have a view, uh, a clear picture of why we have you on set this morning. Oh, thank you, Jerome. Mm. I, I honestly like where you mm. started from. Okay. The, the agriculture mm. budget allocation to, mm. to, to this year's uh, financial year. Well, the Uganda National Farmers Federation mm. is uh, an APEX umbrella organization of farmers okay. uh, that started in 1992 under the hospices mm -hmm. of the Minister of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, it started when a cooperative movement had just collapsed and uh, the, the Minister of Agriculture mobilized farmers and uh, took them uh, for exchange visits okay. to countries where agriculture was a really strong bedrock of the economy. Uh, they managed to visit uh, Scandinavian countries, Denmark, uh, Norway, and some strong uh, agriculture countries like South Africa and Zimbabwe. And one component that uh, they realized was the ability of farmers to work together, which uh, then had not really been uh, strengthened in Uganda. So when they came back, they, they agreed to work together under association. So that's when the Uganda farmers uh, Association was formed, the Uganda National Farmers Association was formed in 1992. Uh, the main objective of Uganda National Farmers Association then, and which is still our objective, is one, to identify where the farmer is. And now, after identifying this farmer, yes. we mobilize this farmer. Identifying this farmer, mobilizing this farmer, and organizing them. I told you we are a membership based organization. We are talking about 100, currently 146 member associations. These are district-based uh, farmers associations, what we call the district farmers associations. We also have commodity-specific associations. Mm -hmm. These are dealing with uh, commodity-specific in tea, in coffee, in uh, apiary, yes. in fisheries, uh, in uh, horticulture. And then we also have the component of empowerment. So once we mobilize these into associations, we empower them through trainings, through uh, advisory, uh, through extension, and through linkages. Okay. So our core mandate resonates around those four areas. Okay. Identifying, in uh, mobilizing, in organizing, and in empowering these farmers through uh, current agricultural practices. Uh, we also have a component of agribusiness because we want to focus on the value chain as an entity. Mm -hmm. Where is the source of seed? How is this seed planted? What are the production technologies? And how is the, uh, the, the harvesting done? How is the post-harvesting done? How is the marketing component done? So we look at that and we want to expose these farmers to new technologies. That's why we are having the National Agriculture Shows Right now we're having two shows. So we want to make sure a farmer is kept into the consignments of having agriculture as a business. That is our core mandate. And uh, from what you're saying, is that the, the farmer is a strong supporter of Uganda's economy. This has been time and again said, and I will use this opportunity to say it, that we are entirely an agrarian economy. Uh, the, the industrialization component, the mining, the tourism, these are supportive. But the core bedrock is that Uganda entirely depends on this sector. And uh, once we depend on something, we have to strengthen it. We have to look at it with a keen eye. We have to look at it with uh, uh, an observant and likelihood impact. So the question that you raise that over the years, the agriculture sector has been getting um, 
I would uh, want to use this word for the lack of a better word, peanut allocation. Peanut allocation. Yes. Few funds. Very few funds. Drive, uh, uh, the, the entire Europe, sector. You mm. had the, the, the HE, the president, over the time talking mm. about the agriculture sector yeah. and demonstrating how practical the agriculture sector is. I remember in 1996 when I was in primary, he was campaigning and he told us how mangoes can transform, just mangoes. Mm. So I do not understand whether the planning uh, part, uh, the ministries, the departments and agencies understand the vision of the president. If he says the agriculture sector is supposed to be supported, and over the years I'm seeing uh, uh, the allocation being one, 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 one trillion, and vis-a-vis uh, -vis the contribution, yeah, we're saying 24% of the GDP is generated from the agriculture sector. Now, let's look at it from just a, a common man's understanding without economics, because for me, I speak for a farmer, okay. as a farmer's mm, federation. Yes. What, does a, ground. Yes. Mm. what does a farmer need from the budget? The farmer only needs the first thing, the source of seed. Okay. How has government supported the farmer to get the source of seed. The farmer is grappling with what to plant, the type of seed, the quality of seed. And uh, when I see the budget, I don't see that component there strengthened. Okay. Because what you plant is what you harvest. Very true. What is in the market right now, and I would probably say because we have done uh, an anti-counterfeit uh, campaign over the years, and mm. we're still doing it, mm. is that I will slope down at Container Village mm. and 70% uh, of the seed there mm. is not of quality. Okay. I appreciate government efforts so much through the Operation Wealth Creation to supply seed. But sometimes the seed is not germinated. Mm. Sometimes the seed is not in time. So the season comes when the farmer really does not have seed. I'm not saying that farmers should be begging for seed from government. No. I'm saying government should ensure that the seed that is in the market is of good quality. You understand the disconnect? Yeah. So, when budget is given and seed is not facilitated very well, and research that generates seeds that can meet the current economic and environmental crises we are moving in is not appropriate then we have a problem in production. So, if over the years we've been struggling with seed, and uh, right now we're not seeing the source of seed, meaning we have an issue. So I would want the budget to first look at the component of seed, strengthen the ability of research institutions to generate the seed that it can uh, withstand the environment conditions. If it is dry season, I have farmers plant seed that can survive. If it is any other season, I have the ability of farmers to access the seed. Secondly, we have a farmer struggling to buy the seed. Finances is an issue. Now, a farmer is struggling to buy the seed. He has no finances. All these cooperatives that we have formed, what the 146 associations, if you went there today, from mm -hmm. Arua to Kabari, from uh, Mbali to, to Gundibujo, they will tell you we don't have enough money to facilitate our operations. So meaning, if they've been able to support the economy by 24%, with the minimum allocations, why then don't we change the, the conversation? Okay. And I say, Joram, mm -hmm. Because you are a strong pillar, let me allocate 40%. Okay, let's, let's move it to 20%. Because uh, the Maputo declaration says 10%. But we have been in conversation with government asking our friends, our partners, our close I friends. I think so actually saying the Maputo declaration says 10%, but we are currently at 3%. We, <laughs> and we are going down and You're going down, below, down the below the 3%. Mm. So my, my argument and the farmer's argument is let's, let's, let's go full, full scale. Let's try our, our bet very well and see how the economy will be transformed. Okay. Because right now we have markets, 
we cannot feed. We have markets we cannot feed within the East African community. We have markets as Uganda we cannot feed. Mm -hmm. Then how can we feed the African market? Okay. How then can we feed the European and the American market and the Chinese market? So let me just look at those different mm -hmm. pillars and okay. the three challenges that the farmers are facing. Mm -hmm. I talked about the issue of inputs. I emphasize on the source of seed because most of us, um, our farmers, are into seed, into uh, crops. We also have fisheries, we also have agroforestry, we also have apiary. So all these components at production level have to be looked at. And I honestly mm -hmm. like the approach the government has taken okay. to strengthen and grip uh, service delivery closer to the milestone, closer to the target people. Who are to, what is the parish development model uh, going to do? It's going to strengthen that component. But I'm worried, and I will lay my fears, that with the experience I have seen in the field, there's a lot of politicization, there's okay. a lot of mismanagement of this great opportunity of a model that we yet to see its reality. So the other component is market. Now, Joram, I mm. have suffered planting my crops. I have harvested them. And they are in my store. They are in my house. They are in the kitchen looking for who to buy. What, what sort of disconnect we are living in, where a farmer goes to the garden Tills and is not sure who is going to buy. Today, I woke up knowing that I'm going to be at Smart TV. Oh, yes. Everyone wakes up knowing where they're going to go. Where they're the going doctor to go. knows where they're mm. going to work. The nurse knows where they're going to work. Mm. The teacher knows where they're going to work. The engineer is still the same. You know, everyone, the business person knows I'm going to open my shop and I get customer. But the farmer does not know who is going to buy his produce. Now that is a very big... So it's a market that is open, but you don't know who, who your target is. market is. And uh. even when it comes, it comes and the farmer has no ability to set the price. Because uh, it is already set by default. Exactly. So now this challenge that the farmer is facing will actually keep them in abject poverty, in, mm -hmm. in a cycle where they will be begging all the time. Hmm? Because if I not set the price, mm -hmm. someone else is going to set the price. Well, in all this, as a federation, have you met up with the government officials or from the local government uh, you know, side? Because at least for the local government, they are always on ground to understand um, the grievances of the farmers. Yeah. What are some of the key uh, grievances you've, you've actually put up there to the government? And what has been worked on so far? Beautiful question, uh, Jerome. Mm -hmm. uh, we are an advocacy and lobby. Uh, organization. We mm. speak for the farmer. And we are happy that government is responding positively. Over the years, we've mm. been pushing for government to be part of us in the planning, in the processing, and implementing to um, inform the general public that government has come to us. Now okay. And has said, come, let's have an MOU implemented. Let's have research. Let's do research together. Let's find this production uh, statistics right from the ground. So one of the things that is being worked on is the ability to generate data, real-time data for precision uh, planning and decision making. Now this just started this year because we, we started uh, a working with strength, well, a strong working relationship with the Minister of Agriculture and Industry and Fisheries. And, uh, we are going to look for data for them, understand where they're going, mm -hmm. and uh, understand where this is going to, to inform the budgeting process. Mm -hmm. For instance, <clears throat> if you look at the production uh, data okay. right now that the ministry has, it is not right the real-time data that is uh, at the grassroots. Mm -hmm. Why? Because government is planning from, has been planning from a vital kind of, you know, scanty data. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the zones, how the production is, if you have not given uh, people 
ability to plan with the real-time data, meaning your planning is going to be scanty, and that is why we're seeing government allocating a peanut to the agriculture sector. So I appreciate government that has come to us to say, let's work together with the farmers. Let's collect real-time data. Let's understand how these crops are performing. Let's understand what is the challenge between extension and the farm. So strengthening the farmers federation means you're strengthening the farmers on grassroots. Okay. I actually didn't tell you about a structure. We start right from the village level. We go to the parish level. So we form a cluster commodities right from the grassroots. Then we extend these clusters to the parish. So we fit in the parish development member. That's why I appreciate government for this model. Now the parish uh, uh, executive committees mm -hmm. form the sub-county executive committees. Okay. And the sub-county executive committees form the district farmers association. And we then form the national uh, farmers council or the, or the uh, annual general meeting for the farmers. So to speak to your question is government is hearing our outcry. But uh, the level of hearing is, is not commensurate to the outcry. The alarm is allowed, but the level is, the help is coming uh, bit by bit. But I appreciate government. One thing that uh, we request government is to still sit and plan with these farmers okay. to hear what they are saying. If market is a problem, journal, if market is my problem, how can I be helped? to access market. How can, for example, the, the, the fourth industrial revolution, this digital innovation, help me to access market right from my, my farm? I don't have to wait for this man who comes with a bicycle or with a, with a pickup or with a, a motorcycle. They call them the, the friends of the farmer who are enemies of the farm, the middleman, because they are setting the price for the farm. So I would want budget allocation to strengthen the ability of farmers to access market and set the prices. I would want a farmer through the associations to do collective bulking, bulk their produce and market together. Meaning that when I have the quantities okay. and I have the qualities, then I can set the price. Okay. When we return after the break, I want us to uh, discuss something to do with the extension workers. Uh, because according to the next budget, some of the civil society organizations believe government is doing less uh, to help them out. And in the next financial year budget, by the way, there is no allocation mm. whatsoever for the extension workers. And yet, there is a specific allocation which is supposed to be uh, heading out to them because they have to be in the value chain no matter what circumstances are there. But of course, we are big on the conversations proceeding around government uh, allocations to, uh, that is, the agricultural sector. Uh, when you come to think of it here, uh, Nelson has been uh, uh, pretty much giving us uh, details in regards to uh, what happens in, uh, for example, what is happening on ground in regards to the agriculture sector. On Wednesday, I mentioned we talked something to do with um, agro-industrialization. And there was a very key issue of uh, the fact that at times government knows less about what is happening on ground, regardless of the fact that the president comes out and uh, brings to us all these particular details in regards to the current statistics of our agricultural sector. It plays a pivotal role, but however, there are lots of things that we really need uh, to work on in order to realize some of uh, uh, these particular goals or targets for our agricultural exports. We return with more discussions in our last part of the show. Good morning.